In this video, we'll discuss the topic of separator sizing here within Promax. So looking at this separator sizing example that I have open, there's a variety of different types of separators that we can size using the Promax sizing capabilities. We see that we can choose between horizontal or vertical vessels. We can also choose whether we're using two-phase or three-phase vessels and different configurations such as this bucket and weir separator that I have over here. So these are the different types of separators we can size and we're going to go ahead and we're going to size this horizontal bucket and weir separator. If I open up that separator, we'll see here on the process data tab that there's this option below to include separator sizing. So I'm going to go ahead and check that box and when I do so it will open up a new tab for me here called the sizing tab. If I open up the sizing tab, it's here that we'll find all the information needed to size our separator. The very first thing it will ask us for is our vessel type. So it's here in this drop-down list that we can choose which type of separator it is that we want to size. I'm going to choose this three-phase bucket and weir separator. And once I've chosen my vessel type, the properties down below will then change to match the type of vessel that I have. Now here below there's a lot of different information that we could type in, certainly enough to confuse just about anyone. And so we try to give you some guidelines and some help along the way to help you know what kind of information you need to input to size this separator. The most useful information in this is found in, within our help files. And you can get to the help files while in this window by simply pressing F1. And that will actually take you directly to the separator sizing section of our help files. So when this opens up, it will supply different information to help you in your sizing. We see here above that it tells us that these calculations will be performed according to the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code. And so we are doing things according to their code that they've given us. And right below that, we have our required parameters listed. So depending what type of separator we want to size, we're going to need a minimum amount of information. So looking for us, we have a horizontal three-phase separator. So this is telling us that at a minimum, we're going to need a corrosion allowance, a material of construction for our shell and head. We'll also need residence times for both our light and heavy liquids. And if we had a boot on our, on our separator, which we don't, we'd also need some boot information there. And so that's the minimum that we need. And any other information we enter will just help Promax to be more specific in its calculations. If I scroll down a little farther here in the help, we'll see a list of all the different sizing parameters. And so if there's any parameter you see and you're not sure what the definition is or what it means, you can find that here in the list along with different definitions to define those for you. And a little bit higher here we can see it provides links to diagrams of these different types of separators. So if I click here on my three-phase bucket and weir separator, it will bring up this very useful picture for us. And so we can see this picture, and it will actually show us by diagram how these different properties are defined. So it's a very helpful picture, one that I use essentially every time I have to size a separator. So these help files are intended to be very helpful for you, and I'd encourage you to open those any time that you are doing some sizing. So if I close this window, we now know what kind of information we need. I'll also mention that down here below in the warnings on our project viewer, this is also going to help guide us on what information we need. We can see again that it's mentioning we need a residence time, materials of construction, along with a corrosion allowance, which is the same thing that our help file told us that we would need. And so I'm going to scroll through and look for that information. Coming down a little farther, we see here a light liquid and heavy liquid residence time. These times can be different, but for my example, I'm going to say five minutes for each of them. We'll see that now in our errors down here, that part has disappeared. It's asking now for a material of construction, which right here is our shell material of construction. And if I select that, it will bring this little arrow which I can click, which will bring up a materials of construction selection window. And here we have a large variety of different materials that you can choose from. 
At the top right, we can select what groups we want to display. So right now I'm only showing the steels, but if we scroll up, we see aluminum and copper alloys are also available. Scrolling to the bottom, I can see stainless steel options, and we also have different thermoplastics, so our PVC pipes, things of that nature. And so you can choose the grouping that you're interested in. Also, different forms can be selected or unselected here to help you narrow down your choices. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll through. I want carbon steel with a specification of A516. So scrolling down a ways here, I can come upon 516 groupings here, and I want 70 grade for my option. So I'm going to select that and click OK. And that will now show up as my shell material of construction. I'm going to use the same material for my head material. And so I'm going to select this and control C and then come down here to control V. And that will just pop it right in. That way I don't have to go back through the whole menu. I can just copy that over. Now the last bit of information I need is a corrosion allowance. So I will type that in here at 0 0.0625 inches for my example. And now we'll see that we don't have any errors, and I can go ahead and click the Solve button. Now that we've solved our separator, it is going to first fill in all the information that we did not supply. And so these are correlated values that Promax will calculate for us. But we could override any of this information if we wanted to. For example, if I knew my liquid-liquid droplet diameter, was a little bit bigger, say 120 microns. I could override that number and solve again. And now scrolling through, if we scroll to the very bottom, we'll see the different information that Promax has calculated from this data. We can see above that we're given a shell length and also an inside diameter above that. And at the very bottom, we're giving a vessel, given a vessel mass with and without water here below as well. We'll notice, going back to the inside diameter, that this is a value that we can override. So Promax has calculated a length and a diameter associated with that length in an effort to give us the smallest vessel possible, or the least weighty vessel in this sense. So if I was to make my diameter a little bigger, let's go up to 8 feet. Right now we can see that my mass is about 36,000 pounds. If I click Enter now with my 8 feet diameter. We'll see that's gone up to 38,000 pounds, and so the weight has gone up. If I went to a lower diameter, so I'm going to go all the way down to 5 feet now, and if I click Solve, we'll see that my mass has gone down slightly, but I also will see a warning among my warnings here that my length to diameter ratio is outside the limit range. So scrolling up a little, I see my shell length to diameter ratio is at 12, meaning I'm 12 times longer than my diameter is. And we don't really want a vessel that's extremely long with a small diameter. And similarly, we don't want a vessel that has a, a really large diameter, but a short length. And so up a little higher, we're able to set a minimum and maximum shell to length to diameter ratio. So you could change these values between 1.5 and 6 is pretty common, and so those are the defaults, but you could change those. And we can see that my value is now falling outside of that range. So if I just delete this diameter and solve again, it will go back to that 6.5 feet diameter, resulting in a 36-foot length for my vessel. But now we can see that our length to diameter ratio falls within that that those ratios that we set, and it's giving me the minimum weight that we can find within those ratios. So that's how this separator sizing works. Again, you can come up and any additional information you have, you could use to override these defaults and to give you a more accurate separator for your particular situation. But that is all that it takes to do this sizing. So I hope this video has been very helpful for you today. And if you have any additional questions about separator sizing or any other topic, you can always give us a call here at our office. Our number is 979-776-5220. Or you can send us an email at support at bre.com, and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. So.
thank you for watching this video today. you guys all have a nice day.